Welcome to bug season in Nova Scotia. The black flies are all over me. You likely can see them. And I have DEET on. I think they're hungrier than they are afraid of the DEET at this time. They're all over me. But all right, let's get moving. The good news is, though, it's really windy out of the north. That's keeping the bugs away. The bad news is, it's really windy out of the north, making it hard to record videos. So I found shelter behind this rock here, which is blocking the north wind behind me. But the bugs found me here as well. Just can't win, right? Okay, here's what we're doing today. We're just gonna have a little fun. I want to go through my five favorite ways for making coffee while I'm out here in the woods. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, just a couple of things I wanna mention. First off, of course, these are my personal preferences. I expect maybe you have some different preferences. And in fact, what I'd like you to do is put in the comments below what your favorite way of making coffee in the woods is. And the next thing is, of each of the ways of making coffee that I'm gonna show you, I had to bring out only one example, and you'll understand what I mean as we go along. Okay. Let's get started. All right, my fifth favorite way of making coffee in the woods is cowboy coffee. Now I know someone's saying, Mark, Mark, you don't like cowboy coffee. You've said that in other videos. And you're right, I don't like cowboy coffee, at least the way it is made traditionally, which is to put a quantity of coffee in water, bring it to a boil, boil the water for a period of time, take it off, let the ground settle, pour, and uh, drink. I was gonna say enjoy, but I can't enjoy it that way. And the reason is, Boiling your coffee, at least in my opinion, makes it taste bitter. It's not a good experience, in my opinion. There is a better way of doing that. In fact, this is the only reason cowboy coffee made it onto my list of top five, is because you don't have to boil your coffee in order to make it that way. The better way of making cowboy coffee is bring your water to a boil, take it off of the heat, put your coffee in, and let it steep for a period of time, let the ground settle, pour it into your cup, and enjoy. And you, I guarantee if you try it this way, you will enjoy it much better. All right, so what are the pros and cons for a cowboy coffee? Pro number one, it's so easy. It really is. All you need is very little equipment. You need a kettle of some type. It could be this small, it could be larger, which means you could make more coffee. That's a pro number two. You will, of course, need coffee. And yes, it does make it different what kind of coffee you use. I'm using Rampage coffee. It's my go-to choice. Everybody knows that. I continue to use that, and it doesn't matter what type of meth or method of coffee I'm making, it's still the Rampage coffee. You cannot make good tasting coffee out of bad coffee. It's just, you can make it taste worse, but you can't make it taste better. So start with a good type of coffee. Now, are there any downsides to cowboy coffee? Yeah, number one, the cleanup. And I know people are saying out there, what are you talking about? All I have to do is just rinse it out in the stream and have done with it, right? Yeah, you could do that, but that's not correct. That's not the ethical, environmentally sound way of doing things. You really should be capturing those grounds and taking them home. Now, people are saying, you're just nuts. They're organic, they're going to compost into the ground. Yes, they will, but they'll leave behind trace minerals and elements and compounds that don't belong there. Basically, the rule should be, if it didn't originate in the woods, it doesn't belong in the woods. Take it home. That's leave no trace, I know, not everybody agrees. And maybe one or two pot pots of coffee are not gonna hurt. But if we all did that, if we all left our grounds of coffee in the woods, eventually it's gonna make an impact on the environment for the plants and the animals that live there. All right, enough said about that. Let's move on to method number four. All right, method number four is the French press. Now, the example I brought out today is a GSI French press. In fact, my GSI Infinity Mug will nest inside of this, but you do have to take the piston off of it in order to uh, have it nest properly. There, okay, so there are a number of different French presses I could have brought out. I have a nice little titanium one from the company Bestagruth that I, I did a review on it. Nice little pot, works. It's a nice little French press. Um, and I have a Stanley, a much larger Stanley Coffee Brew and Go, I think it's called. I did a review on that a few year, years ago, and I could have brought either one of those out in the woods today, but this is very lightweight and compact. Makes a couple of cups of coffee, I don't know, probably 20 ounces or so. So that's enough for one person to have at any given time. So what are some of the pros of a French press? Quick and easy, there's no question about it. Put your coffee in, put your hot water in, put the cover on, let it steep a minimum of four minutes, press it down, and that separates the grounds away from the water and you're ready to pour it out. 
it's also really good tasting. If you do it right, have good, good coffee to start with. Don't let it steep too long. Don't put in too hot of water. I know there's a lot of fine little pieces that go along with this, but if you work at it and you come up with the, just the right recipe, you can't beat a cup of French press coffee. So why did it make number four in my list? Couple of items. Number one, like cowboy coffee, the cleanup. Uh, yeah, now this is kind of nice. I can actually scoop it out with a spoon down to almost the last ground and put it in my compost bag that I take home. My bigger ones, they're a little bit harder to scoop out, but so it's a little bit easier than cowboy coffee often is to clean up, but it's still a bit of a challenge. The other one is the way you make the coffee in a French press. More often than not, your French press is a single use item. That's what this is. Well, I guess I could use it as a huge coffee cup in, in and of itself, but more often than not, French press is just for doing that, making the coffee, which means it's not a dual use item. It's not something that, well, it takes up weight or it takes up room in your pack, has weight, that type of thing. Now, there are exceptions, of course, like the Bestigru titanium one. I can use that just for boiling water for whatever reason. And the same thing with the Stanley, it's stainless steel. It uh, just can use it as a pot for boiling water in. So they are dual use, but at the same time, most French presses that people purchase are single-use items. So that's a bit of a downside, but it still makes a great cup of coffee. All right, what's method number three? All right, method number three is the mocha pot. I have a video on this specific mocha pot and how to make coffee using the mocha pot while out in the woods. And you know, I think this makes one of the very best cup, tasting cups of coffee. Uh, there is, though, however, one that makes a better cup of coffee, and that, of course, will be my number one choice, as you'll see in a minute. So, what's the pros on this? Great taste in coffee. It works really effectively, but there are a few downsides to it as well. Again, single-use item. Now, this is made of aluminum. I do have stainless steel ones. They do weigh more, and uh, you know, they'd be, I'd be less likely to take them out in the woods. There is even a titanium version available now through the Firebox stove store. I don't have that yet. I'm hoping to get my hands on it someday just to see how well it works. So that'd be nice because it would lighten the load a little bit at cost though. But uh, yeah, it's still a single use item. So, and here's another thing, obviously you can see it. They have, tend to have plastic handles and knobs on them. Sometimes they have wood on them. You could take that off, I suppose. I guess what I mean by that is it limits it to the way you're going to heat your water in the bottom of the mocha pot. For me, it's either going to be an alcohol stove or it's going to be a gas stove. There's not much chance of me using this over a wood stove or an open fire for that reason. No big deal, right? Okay. Now, use of this is actually a little complicated, which can be a bit of a downside. I'll show very quickly for those of you who are not familiar with how a mocha pot works. But uh, as I said, I do have a full review. So the basically, it's broken into two chambers. In the bottom is where your water goes. And there is a pressure relief valve. You don't fill your water above that. Here's another thing. The amount of coffee is limited to the size of your mocha pot, but uh, you can get big ones and small ones, of course. This is the funnel shaped thing that holds your coffee. You can see it has a perforated filter in the bottom of it. So once your water's inside, you would put your coffee in this. The nice thing, of course, is this is actually your measurement as well. So you put your ground coffee up to the top of this. You can go a little less than this, of course, and it, it's, it will actually make, uh, make it easier to perk. Drop it in and then reattach the top portion of it. All right, little look inside. You can see there's a spout in the center with a couple of holes at the very top. Put this on top of your heat source, wait for the water in the bottom to heat up. It will turn to steam. It'll rise up through the center of the, of the coffee in that little funnel and will force the coffee up through that central spot and into this chamber at the top. It, you'll hear it bubbling and going on at the end. You'll hear it start to sizzle. Take it off the heat. You're ready to pour and enjoy a really, really rich, nice cup of coffee. I really like it. Here's the other thing, I guess, that is actually quite convenient about this is a cleanup. Once it's all said and done, now mind you, it's going to stay hot for a while, even more so if you're using a stainless steel one. But once it's all said and done, you can take your little uh, coffee holder filter uh, funnel type thing, uh, there's probably a proper name for it, and you can dump it right into your compost bag. It makes it much easier to clean up, clean up afterwards. Uh, I guess the only reason it didn't make it higher on my list is because of the single-use nature of it. All right. 
How about number two? All right, my second favorite way of making coffee in the woods is with the pour over, some type of pour over device. Now, the one I brought out today is the one I tend to take with me most often because it's so simple, it's so light, and it compacts down and goes into my backpack without any bulk really at all. And I actually find that the silicone helps to keep the coffee warm a little longer in cold weather. This one is very, very inexpensive. In fact, these are worth, I see them on Amazon um, under different names. For, and actually, I'm just gonna suggest that you Google silicone pour, collapsible pour over coffee maker and you'll come up with a couple of them. This one I bought for $2 at the local dollar store a couple of years ago. I don't know if they have them, but for those of you in Canada, I got this at Dollarama, so you might want to check and see if they're there. So, so simple to use. All they require is this, some type of device, and there are non-collapsible ones, and they range in price from $2 or something like this, up to one outrageously expensive, but really nice one made from titanium, uh, from the Keith Titanium Company that I reviewed a little while ago. Really nice, really expensive. Okay, well, enough said about that. All you need, in addition to the pour-over device, is a filter of some type. I brought three choices of filter out to show you. Traditional paper filters. These are a number two paper filter. This is a stainless steel mesh filter. This came up in one of my recent videos about inexpensive pour-over devices. Works really well. You do have to clean it out afterwards as opposed to just putting your whole paper filter into your compost bag, but it works and then you don't have to carry paper filters. And another one that you don't have that you can reuse is a cotton filter as well. Now, this is just made out of some unbleached cotton that I had at home and just sewed it in the shape of a number two filter. You can see it's getting a little ragged from use. Works really well. Does a good job of filtering your coffee. One thing I will say though is make sure you wash it out very well after you use it because the oils will tend to remain in the cotton and that'll give you an off flavor the next time you go to make another cup of coffee. So just wash it out afterwards. Okay, so what are the pros? Obviously, Lightweight, compact, really great taste in coffee, very easy to clean up. Are there any cons? Not very many, really. I guess, I don't know if there are any real cons to this at all. Uh, this appears in a lot of my videos because of that. Just so easy, so it makes a good cup of coffee, uh, but there is just one method that makes an even better cup of coffee, and I'll sh share that with you next. All right, number one, the most favorite way I have for making coffee in the woods. I imagine longtime viewers of my channel have already guessed what it is, and of course, the AeroPress. In my opinion, you cannot find a better way to make coffee in the woods or at home, for that matter. In fact, this is what I pack when we go traveling. It's just so compact, so effective, and actually quite versatile. You wouldn't think to look at it at first that this is all that versatile. True, it is a single purpose item, but me and made of the polycarbonate or whatever the material is that it's made of, it's still quite lightweight and it stores well. It stores well, in fact, there is a cavity in here that's not part of the brewing itself that can be used for things like my coffee. I can actually take a bag of coffee, put it down inside and use that space for that. Or I have a grinder, where's my grinder at? This is a grinder that you see a lot of. These also will tuck down inside. Now, I haven't got it letting it go all the way down inside right now. A lot of people will take the bottom off and just put the top portion down inside and when they go to make their coffee, grind directly into the uh, AeroPress. It's effective, I don't mind, but I don't mind actually carrying mine separate from the, French, uh, from the AeroPress as well. It doesn't really add all that much weight. All right, couldn't make be any simpler in use and here's where the versatility comes in. So for those of you who are not familiar with the AeroPress, I, it has appeared in a lot of my videos. I have reviews on, and on this and show it in a number of different videos. But here is the, there's actually two ways primarily to use the AeroPress. I'll show you both right now and then I'll actually make coffee using one of those two ways. So what you get is you get a plunger and it has a very tight seal and you get a brew chamber just that easy. In order to use this, you would start with one of two methods. You can either, all right, let's put the filter in first. That's show, better shows the first method. All right, so I have a little bag of filters. I have two types of filters I want to show you. First off is the tra traditional paper filter. Here's one of the advantages, very, very small filters. They uh, use a lot less material, and if you're composting them, they, you know, they, they go a long way, and they're 
really inexpensive to purchase. But if you want to go just a little step further, invest in one of these. And this is a stainless steel filter with miniature, tiny microscopic perforations in it. And, all, and you put this in the same way. In fact, I think I'll use that today. It's just been a while since I used it this way, just to show you how well it works. To, in order to use it, take your filter, paper or stainless steel, put it in the filter basket, grab the brew chamber, lock, whoop, not like that. There, lock it on like this. And now, put your coffee in the brew chamber. This is method number one. Put your coffee in the brew chamber, heat your, your water to the appropriate temperature, pour the water in up to the height that you want for the amount you want to brew. And we'll talk about ratios in, in a minute. Put the piston on the top like this. That'll create an air seal and let it sit for a period of time or you can begin pushing it down immediately. Letting it sit will allow it to extract more flavor, but there's a point at which it's going to extract too much of the bitterness. So it's, there's an experience thing here. Four minutes is what I average on uh, doing it this way. So that's, that's method number one. The other way of doing this is to actually start with the piston in the top, invert the whole unit upside down, put your coffee in the brew chamber while it sits upside down, pour your water in, put your, trying to do this and balance at the same time, put your filter on top, now let it sit for four minutes and when you're ready, flip it upside down over top of your mug, press the piston down, you're good to go. So, so easy. And you can vary the recipe and make, I know, I know somebody's going to say, but you know, that's all you get, right? There's only that much coffee. Well, that's true. But if you have somebody with you and you want to make an extra cup of coffee, then you can do so by just doubling the amount of coffee you put in this before you put the water in. It'll make a really strong concentrate, but then you water that down again with hot water so that two of you have a cup of coffee each. Or you can drink it all yourself if you really want the caffeine rush that that'll provide. So there is some versatility. Now, believe it or not, this has become so popular that there are international competitions of people with their French press, or excuse me, their Aero press, competing for the best recipe for doing so. And I, I won't even get into it, but it, it begins with, with the amount of coffee, the grind of the coffee, uh, how fast they push it down, how long they let it steep, the temperature of the water, it just goes on and on, all the variables. And uh, I guess that's what I'm saying there, is there is some versatility in the type of brew you can make. I've actually talked about in other videos of making cold brew coffee using this. You just let it sit on your counter. It doesn't work well for out in the woods unless you've got a spot you can leave it for a period of time. But you let your uh, ground coffee sit in cold water, ideally overnight, and then you can press it through the filter and you've got a concentrate of cold brew coffee. And if you've never tasted cold brew coffee at, at one of the coffee restaurants, uh, it's worth it. Uh, I like it in the summertime when you don't necessarily want a hot drink, but you would still like to have that cup of coffee flavor and the caffeine that goes with it, of course. Try a cold brew. I think you, you might like that. And uh, you can, there's all kinds of variations of adding cream or sugars or different things like that to it as well. So there is versatility to this, but it's more about the quality of the product. And one last thing I have yet to mention, and it's cleanup. And I think rather than talk about the cleanup with this, why don't I make myself a cup of coffee and I'll show you just how easy it is to clean this up afterwards. So it's gonna take a few minutes for my water to heat up here and uh, while I do that, while I'm waiting that is, I will grind some fresh coffee in my grinder. You know, you don't have to have a grinder to bring it with you, but obviously the fresher the coffee, the fresher it is roasted, the fresher it is ground, the better the tasting coffee. So if you're really after a good cup of coffee, it's worth taking these extra steps. Yeah, I know it does add bulk and weight when you go and, pro you know, some steps to the process, but really, really worth the outcome. So I'm using the Code Black coffee from Rampage. Oops, don't drop beans on the ground. They're too precious. There, so I put in about three tablespoons. Put the lid on. Cover the coffee up so I don't lose any. Put it aside. 
Now this is part of the ritual, so it does take a little bit of time, which is to grind the coffee. So I won't make you watch me grind the coffee, but I'll come back when the coffee's all ready to be go on to the next step. Well, that was good timing. Water has just come to a boil. My coffee is all ground. Put it in my AeroPress. I'm using the inverted method, as I said, a, is my preferred way of doing it. Set that aside. So, where did I just lay the stick? Here it is. A little bit embarrassing. I normally keep a spoon in my food bag. Then it's there all the time. I washed it the other day and didn't put it back. So, stir stick. Take the water off. Now, I would usually recommend waiting a couple of seconds for this to drop temperature. So, it's at about 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius when you take it off the boil. You want it to about 190, 200 Fahrenheit when you go to pour it in your coffee for the best results. Now, you don't have to, obviously, but for the best results. So, here's where the stick comes in. Just a little bit of a cheat stick to ensure that I don't. Uh, tip it over by mistake. The one downside for this method is that it's top heavy. Uh, you need a, a level surface. I've done the best I could here in the woods, just leveled it off a little bit, but make sure that you're careful when you do this because it will tip on you if you're not careful. Now, the reason I'm adding more water is that first bit of water created a bloom where the fresh coffee released gases upon the heat and still blooming underneath. And that's, that's the indication of a nice freshly roasted coffee. Then of course you have a little space on top. Don't have to fill it up like I just did, but if you do, it just gives you a little bit more in your cup. So I did decide to put the paper filter inside because I want to show you how easy it is to clean up afterwards and it would have been not more difficult it's just I would have had an extra step to use with the stainless steel filter. All right all there is to do now is wait four minutes and we we'll go on to the next step of pressing the coffee into my mug and that's when I'll bring it back. So about four minutes have passed. I didn't time it obviously. This is the GSI Infinity mug that I had nested inside that GSI French press I showed you a little earlier. By the way, uh, they're not very expensive to buy. I just happened to get mine at a thrift store very, very conveniently. But, you know, I haven't owned them now. If you're looking for a good, lightweight French press, yes, still a single-use item. It's about as good as you can get. They work really, really well. But this is the other thing it does really well. Okay, so now it's just a steady downward pressure as I push all the water through all of the coffee into my cup. You'll know you're at the end because there's always an air gap and a slight hiss. Now I do it just a little bit of a drawback. You'll see why in a second. Okay, not a whole lot of coffee in this big cup, but it's going to taste good. I just want to put the lid on to make sure bugs don't get in it or stuff falling out of the trees. Now I just wanted to show you how easy it is to clean up. So this is my compost bag for the day. Take the filter back, uh, holder off. Now the reason I did that drawback is because it pulls the filter and coffee just back from the edge a little bit. It makes this next step easier. And this is how easy it is to clean your cup. Just pop the whole puck of coffee in to the bag and you're ready to go. Now mind you, I left a little bit on by mistake, but look how much cleaner that is. I can just wipe that off now and I'm ready to go. Now, mind you, I would recommend washing it off so you don't have any tastes left behind from the last cup of coffee to the next cup of coffee. But otherwise, that's how easy it is to clean this up. That's the thing that this has going for it the most, I think, is just the ease of use, not only in using it to brew the coffee, but using it or to clean up afterwards. Okay, all there is now is to give the coffee a few minutes to come down to a drinkable temperature and we'll wrap this video up. So I've waited a few minutes for my coffee to get down to the right temperature. And as I did, I started to notice that it was getting so much nicer out here in the woods today. The clouds have all broken up. It's pretty much clear blue sky. The sun is intense. The wind seems to have died down a little bit. And you know what that means? More black flies. I don't know if you can see them around me. Um, I guess the deed seems to be working pretty good, but they're in my eyes and my ears and my nose. My, you know what it's like. All right, that aside, let's get the coffee test going here. Smells good. Oh my goodness, that's good. <laughs> Another one. Wow. All 
All right, if you have never tried using an AeroPress to make your coffee, you really owe it to yourself. That is, if you like coffee, you really owe it to yourself to get one. It'll change your whole definition of what good is when it comes to drinking coffee. I know it did for me. So I went through my five different methods, my five favorite way of making coffee in the woods, and I started off with cowboy coffee. Surprise to some people, surprise to me, but remember, you don't have to boil it, and if you don't boil it, then it's going to taste much better than if you do boil it. It has its downsides, including cleanup and things like that. French press, wonderful way to make coffee. That's been around for so long, it makes a great cup of coffee. And when you think about it, you're putting hot water in with the coffee and you're pressing the filter down to separate the coffee and the grounds. It's really just an evolution of the proper way or the better way of making cowboy coffee. Downside, of course, is it's a purpose-built item. It really doesn't have multiple uses. So, yeah, you have to consider whether or not it's worth the effort and the weight and the bulk to take it with you. Now, if you've got a metal one, like I mentioned, my Stanley and my Best of Groot titanium one, then, of course, you're going to be able to get some multiple uses out of it. And there are other French presses out there. I'm sure people will tell me what it is that they're using and what their preference is there. And then you've got the mocha pot. And I would recommend the mocha pot with the one exception is that it is a single use item and it has some weight. But it depends on how much you like good coffee. It will make a nice cup of coffee. It really, really will. Small amount of coffee at that. Almost espresso strength. So some people like to make it and then water it down a little bit. That's fair if that's what you like. Black flies. And then I went to the pour over. Probably the easiest and fastest and lightest and most convenient way of making coffee and it would be my number one choice if only it had it, the same flavor in the finished product as the AeroPress does. The AeroPress just makes a nicer cup, tasting cup of coffee. Plus, it's so easy to clean up. Plus, it's versatility. Downside, it is a single use item. But again, you have to weigh out how much do you like a nice cup of coffee while you're in the woods? I do, as you know. And from the comments of previous videos, I know a lot of you enjoy having a nice cup of coffee in the woods as well. All right, so those are my top five, but I'm interested in knowing what's your favorite way of making coffee in the woods. Please put that in the comments section below. This has not been a review of any of the methods, more just a show and tell of the different ways of making coffee. Again, there are multiple different types of French presses. There's only one AeroPress though. Multiple different types of French presses, pots you can make your cowboy coffee in, pour overs, mocha pots, all kinds. I just chose one to represent the, the method itself. Okay, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.